29 to 28. The Lou faking, faking the two running backs. Started left and pitched it to Anthony Arnold, the flanker, who came back by himself, naked and alone to the left. The interesting thing, though, on Buck, he almost left school right after he got there. Uh, the White Sox came to him, and they wanted to sign him for baseball. And they offered him a contract and $25,000. And they were going to send him to Appleton, Wisconsin. And he and his dad took a map out and put it on a kitchen table to find where Appleton was, wondering if Buck should do this thing. Just walk away from college, go to professional baseball, and make some money. They found Appleton not too far from Chicago, technically, and decided if they could get 50000 out of it, they would do it. But the $25,000 figure stayed there. They couldn't get the fifty, So he went on and had a great career at Georgia. Growing up as a youngster in Valdosta, I knew Georgia had two very special games that everybody paid attention to, Florida and Georgia Tech. As a youngster, my father was a big Georgia fan. I dreamed about one day perhaps playing in one of these games. And people ask me, but what was your biggest thrill at Georgia? And some of them are disappointed to hear that it wasn't the Notre Dame game in the Sugar Bowl in 1980. It wasn't uh, the Georgia-Florida game in 1980 when Lindsey caught the pass and went the distance. And to me, the most special game for me was that Georgia Tech game in 1978. I think every player really likes to look back at that first game they had an opportunity to play in. And for me, it was the Georgia Tech game in 1978. I hadn't played in four or five weeks and had no reason to believe that I would play that week. But we fell uh, down 20 to nothing. Coach Dooley looked at me and said, Buck, get in there. I had to find my helmet. I didn't even know where that was. I really didn't have time to be nervous. All I knew was we were down, and this was a great opportunity because we were going to have to throw the football, which is something normally we wouldn't do. So I was very excited about that opportunity. Just one of those days for me where everything I did was the right thing. It's really hard to explain. It just happened that way. I mean, underneath it all, I was confident that I could do the job. But until you get out there and actually do it, the people around you have a little doubt. I think I proved to a lot of people on our team that uh, you know I was capable of helping the team win, and that meant more to me than anything. I think it's probably the greatest spectator game that we've ever been involved in because you had everything in the game that you could possibly had. You had an onside kick. You had a kickoff return. You had a punt return for a touchdown, Scott Warner, followed by a kickoff return by Georgia Tech for 105 yards. And then uh, we were backed up, had to go to go for it on fourth and ten. Buck Ballou, a young freshman, comes off the bench uh, to lead us, and uh, he gets trapped back there and somehow gets the ball off to Amp Arnold, who scores. Now we got to go for two. The first time we go for two, we don't make it, but there are eight flags out there at least because they've interfered with us, so we get another shot. Uh, our fullback runs the wrong way on the play. Uh, but despite that, uh, we make a tremendous play. Buck pitches out, and Amp Arnold scores and prances in the end zone. We're up now by one, but Tech isn't finished. So they come down the field, and they got Eddie Lee Ivory. I mean, what a sensational day he had. And finally, we intercepted the ball inside the 15, 20-yard line uh, and finally won the game. But I think of all the great spectator games, I'm not saying this is a game I like as a coach, but if you were just going out to watch a football game, to me that's the greatest probably we've ever had because it had so many things all in one game. One fake blue looking, finds a man on the sideline, he hits Scott, and Scott's feet went out, he slipped in the wet grass on the 29, just as two men, however, were waiting there for him. I'm out on the field on the score, Georgia 14, Georgia Tech 20. Now what's going to happen? The 1978 Georgia-Georgia Tech game was arguably the best game in the history of this storied rivalry. The emotional roller coaster that happened on the field could only be matched by the emotional roller coaster that was Larry Munson in the press box. The Jackets dominated the first half at Sanford Stadium in front of 60,000 fans. Eddie Lee Ivory scored twice, and the Jackets added two field goals to take a commanding 20 to nothing lead. But in the second quarter, Vince Dooley replaced starting quarterback Jeff Pyburn with freshman Buck Ballou. The move worked. Georgia scored just before the half, but still trailed 20 to seven. In the second half, Willie McClendon punched it in again, and Tech's lead was cut to 20 to 14. That's when the fireworks started. The dogs defense forced a punt, and Scott Warner took it from there. Trying to set up a return, and Ted Peebles kicks it very well. 
Warner on the 28, ran by one, ran by another, ran by another, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, stop, Warner, 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 Warner. Look at the stadium, look at it. 20 to 20, Scott Warner, 72 yards, just boom, straight up. But the lead was short-lived. While the red and black faithful were rocking, Tex Drew Hill took the ensuing kickoff and raced 101 yards. After a successful two-point conversion, the Jackets were back in front, 28 to 21. Now there is no sense in going away because you know it's not going to end like this. And it didn't. Buck Ballou would engineer an incredible 85-yard drive that would include two fourth down conversions. It was the type of challenge that the 18-year-old freshman quarterback thrived on. I never doubted I could get it done. I mean, if anybody ever believed in Buck Ballou, it was me. Uh, as a freshman, there were some doubts, but uh, you know, I knew if you concentrate on those doubts, you're not going to get the job done. And, and my background had taught me that I had been successful in those pressure situations, and I, I never doubted it at that point in time. I knew that a lot of people were depending on Buck Ballou to get it done. And even as an 18-year-old kid, uh, I didn't focus on that. I knew uh, I had a job to do, and I was confident in the fact that I could get it done. I was anxious to prove it to the teammates that, that I was capable of helping them win, and that was very important to me. The dogs had their backs to the wall, but this was nothing new for the 1978 Wonder Dogs. This team would do their best work in the last three minutes of the game. Fourth down. What a year. 236 Georgia getting beat in their own ballpark. They need two and a half yards now on fourth down. Buck Ballou sprinting to the right, looking to throw, looking in trouble. And there's a man open on Touchdown! Touchdown! <laughs> going for two. They're going for two. And young Buck Ballou looking. And he throws. No interference. They knocked the receiver down, three flags. Officials threw the flags immediately, so they moved the ball half a yard closer to the goal line. Different play came in from the sideline at that point in time. Uh, the quarterback uh, option, we were going to fake to the tailback, Willie McClendon up the middle, and I was to get out on the corner, uh, play the defensive end. If he took me, I was going to kick it out. He took me, I barely got it out to amp. And once I saw him catch the ball, I knew there was nobody out there to, to uh, prevent him from scoring. Immediately, uh, I knew he was going to score and we were going to win the game. Uh, <laughs> how do you describe it? I mean, as a freshman, you never expect these things to happen. I, I, just pure out just joy. I, you know, I didn't know how to react as a freshman. Gosh. Look at taking a 6-5, pack close. Dogs need a yard for possible victory. And Ballou pitched the ball. Arnold got it. Anthony Arnold, a flag. He got two points. Anthony Arnold, a flanker. They ran Anthony Arnold. They pitched a delay and got the yard. 29 to 28. Buck probably was vastly underrated. Never given a chance to stand in the pocket, let's say, and throw it 17 consecutive downs like all quarterbacks dream of. Great talent, great baseball player, and probably could have had a career in Major League Baseball if he had walked away from college football the first time the opportunity came to him from the Chicago White Sox. Now, Buck was uh, really, really underrated, very accurate, strong arm. And you know, there was two or three games where we suddenly just let him throw a bomb early in a ball game and he, he would connect. But he played with a running football team and he was part of it. He was very much a part of it.